Hello and welcome to Kitchen Flavors. I'm your host, Jose Pino. I'm a seasoned chef with two decades of experience in the fine dining field. Uh, my food has graced the halls of the LVMH clientele, including Chanel, Louis Vuitton, Berluti, between other uh, high fashion entities. Uh, today, we're gonna be doing for you guys uh, seared, a three course meal, including a seared tuna tataki with a jicama slaw. We're gonna follow that with a seared filet mignon. We're gonna roast the medium rare. We're gonna pair that with a pan seared mushrooms and, and a butternut squash puree. We're gonna finish the, the evening today with a coconut roast water panacota. We're gonna serve that with some fresh fruit. Thank you for joining us and let's go get to it. The kitchen flavors dessert of the day is gonna be a coconut rose water panna cotta. Uh, it's a dessert very dear to my heart because uh, it, uh, it fuses the traditional Caribbean desserts with the elegance of Italian pastries. So let's jump right to it. First of all, uh, the panna cotta, it's uh, the difference between the panna cotta and the traditional Puerto Rican tembleque, is what it's called, uh, is that uh, Panna cotta uses gelatin, the tembleque uses uh, cornstarch to thicken the whole thing. So first of all, we're gonna be doing the blooming the, the gelatin. You gotta do this first, cause uh, you gotta let it um, hydrate. So first of all, we're just gonna put it in the milk. It's about, uh, about a package and a half of the gelatin, and we're just gonna be using one third of a cup of uh, skim milk. And that once we have this like this, we're just gonna put it to the side and just let it bloom. Uh, second of all, uh, what we're gonna be doing, we're gonna do the base of the dessert. The, obviously, we're gonna start with a cup and a half of coconut milk. After the coconut milk, we're gonna do, this is gonna give a lot of the richness to the dessert. We're gonna do a cup of cream. Once we got the cream in there, we're just gonna sweeten it a little bit uh, with just a uh, half a cup of sugar. Now we're just gonna do this on a medium high heat, just to bring it to a boil. Once we have it on a boil, then we're gonna add our flavoring elements to it. You do wanna wait until we have everything nice and hot, ready for the molding to add the the flavorings because they're very they're very volatile and they evaporate so the more you wait to put them in the, the recipe the more taste you're going to get out of the out of the product and now we're just going to make sure we stir it we keep an eye on it it's got cream it will boil over if you're not looking paying close attention to it and uh we're just waiting that for for this to boil and uh, we'll be right back when it's ready now that our base is, uh, it, came, it came to a boil, just wanna make sure that you, that you swirl it around, make sure that there's no sugar in the bottom of the pan. Our, our gelatin, it's already hydrated, so what are we gonna proceed to do? We're gonna add it to the hot milks. And we're just gonna whisk it in, and just make sure everything, it's, uh, it dissolves into the cream. This is what's gonna give a, uh, the, the consistency to the dessert at the end. It's technically, panna cotta is technically like a gelatin, but it's a little bit more refined because you don't use as much of the, of the gelatin. So it's got a more silky, silky finish to it. So now that our gelatin is dissolved, here's a, a, a quick tip. When you're doing something with gelatin, always strain it just to make sure that you don't have any little bits and pieces, because uh, sometimes they don't dissolve completely, and then you get a, you get a, you get a bad mouthfeel when the, when the final product is done. Now that we have it here, we're actually gonna be doing two presentations on this. We're gonna sh I'm gonna show you how to do it in a, in a glass recipient, and then we're gonna do it in a, in a mold type of situation, so we're gonna mold it. Once we have the mixture strained, we're gonna, now we're gonna proceed to add the flavorings. You're gonna add is about an ounce of uh, good quality rose water. And uh, what we're using today, this is uh, Madagascar vanilla. 
very good. It's a very very small amount, but you got you. I recommend you use a good quality ingredient. And now we're gonna put it in our vessels. And I suggest go three quarters to half of the glass. We're gonna do this again. About three quarters to half of the glass. We're just gonna set this one aside. This is gonna be our second presentation. Uh, I'm gonna be using this uh, little metal containers. They're about four ounces each. Uh, they're pre-greased, so we, we make sure that when we're turning them over, the gelatin actually wants to separate from the container. And this one you can fill about three quarters of the way up, or you can actually make them up full. It's a smaller container, so it's about how many ounces you want to serve to your guests. Once we have them here, we're just going to proceed to refrigerate them for at least an hour. Uh, optimal overnight but uh, yeah another tip sometimes uh, this, con this desserts like to keep bubbles on the top this is for like restaurant quality desserts a little flame you put it on the top and it just pops all the, bo all the bubbles that the dessert has on the top so you get a more clean and, f and refined setting when you're serving your, your guest we'll be right back the entree part of the of the meal is going to be a, filet, a marinated seared filet mignon with a winter squash puree. I like to make that a little bit spicy. And uh, we're going to have some, uh, some pan roasted mushrooms and a Cabernet Sauvignon porcini reduction. It's a fantastic dish. All the flavors melt together. Um, let's, let's get started. The, the first thing we need to do we're going to have to marinate the filet mignon. I recommend uh, to have a good relationship with your butcher and know where, the, where you're getting your meat at. I would like to, I like to use Angus filet. We're going to start with, uh, with two eight ounce center cut filets. Uh, the more on the center that you go on the filet, the less seams and uh, less sinews you're going to have. Some more upscale decadent uh, cut. We're going to do a little bit of olive oil thyme, rosemary, and a touch of garlic. We're going to marinate it with some salt, fresh black pepper, we're just going to toss and turn them. You're going to make sure everything is coat, nicely coated so those flavors can permeate the meat. Make sure you turn it and turn it. There we go. We have the filets almost ready. Once we got the filets ready, you want to set them aside and then give them uh, at least like a 15 minutes for those flavors to penetrate to the meat. While that's getting ready, we're going to get, get our butternut squash puree ready. Uh, this will work with any winter squashes, any de la cata, acorn squashes. As long as uh, it's a hard product, it'll work. For this one, again, we're going to be marinating this again. Uh, we're going to do olive oil. We're going to do some chili flakes. Depending on how spicy you like, you can add a little bit, you can add a lot. This is uh, something that I like to use a lot. It's called coriander. It's the, the seed of the cilantro. Uh, we're going to do some sage. I do think that sage and the, and the winter squashes, they go very well together. And just to add a little touch of sweetness, we're going to do a, a little drizzle of honey. Any honey will do for this. Then we're definitely going to season this, a touch of salt, some pepper. I do recommend to go with a spoon at first, but if you're, once you get confident in the kitchen, you can start tossing and turning your food. Once we have this ready, we're going to get an oven safe dish 
we will be putting them here. We're going to cover this with aluminum foil. We're going to put it in a 375 degree oven. We're going to bake this for around 35 minutes. Then we're going to uncover it and keep roasting it because you, you want the acorn squashes to, to dry a little bit. If not, when you make the puree, it's going to be a little too wet. So we're going to cover this. Make sure you preheat the oven before. And we're just gonna put it in our oven. And uh, I do highly recommend you set a timer for these things. The next thing we're gonna approach on this recipe, it will be the, the red wine reduction. Red wine reduction is gonna take a few minutes. So by the time that the squashes are in the oven, we can work on this. Uh, I like to use red wine for this. It goes very well with meat. I'm using them today. We're going to use a Cabernet Sauvignon. Uh, you want to do about, about half a bottle. We're going to add some porcini mushrooms, the dry porcini mushrooms. Uh, you can find this at uh, basically almost any, any supermarket the moment. We're going to add about an ounce of dry porcinis. We're gonna add about three garlic cloves. We're gonna add one shallot. I quarter the shallot so the flavors can permeate the wine. And we're gonna add a little herbage. We're gonna do a little bit of thyme on this one. Now we're just gonna put this on a medium high heat and we're just gonna let it reduce until it becomes a glaze. We're gonna, we're gonna go like, like three quarters of the way with this. Keeping an eye on it so we don't scorch that. Now that we have the mushrooms, we're gonna cut the mushrooms in half. We're gonna get our preheated pan. We're gonna do a touch of oil. And we're gonna put them flat side down. We really wanna get a sear on those mushrooms. We really wanna caramelize all that surface area what that we just did when we cut them in half. So make sure we put them all the same way, all of them down. We're going to be doing today a combination cooking. We're going to uh, pan sear them and then we're going to add a little bit of chicken stock to go with it and some aromatics. And uh, when, once the chicken stock it, it reduces, it's going to glaze the mushrooms. It's going to give them a very luscious and decadent uh, mouthfeel to them. And that, uh, that combination cooking, it's a uh, very, very, very well used in uh, fine dining establishments and like Michelin star restaurants. Yeah, we're just gonna keep this in a medium heat. We're just gonna make sure that this mushrooms get some nice color. While we're waiting on that, might as well uh, sear our filet because we're gonna put them in the oven with a, uh, with our, with our squashes. Now that we have our filet that's been marinated for about five minutes, wanna make sure that we season it right. And on a preheated pan, see, there you go. That's why you wanna hear when you put them in the, in the pan. There we go. We're just gonna give it about 30 seconds to a minute on each side, and then we're just gonna proceed to put them in the oven to finish them cooking. There we go. Well, this is getting ready. Our mushrooms have been working here for a minute or two. You see how, you, how we get it? You're looking for that type of caramelization on them. Once we have them caramelized, we're gonna, we're gonna do our aromatics. You really wanna wait until almost halfway through the process because if you put them a little bit too early, we're gonna be burning the, the aromatics. So we're gonna do the shallots, the garlic. We're gonna do a touch of rosemary on the mushrooms. Now that we have them here, we do wanna saute this. You just wanna saute this until the aromatics 
just get a little fragrance on them. You really don't want to cook them all the way. See how that meat is getting that beautiful crust on them? It can still use another second. See, but we got in there. Once, once the aromatics are ready, you will you will smell when they're ready. Once you start smelling that 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 indulging flavor, we're gonna hit it with a little bit of chicken stock, about four ounces. And this is the whole combination cooking. The combination is that we've been searing them and then we're just gonna braise them in the chicken stock. So, here we go. We have our filet. Doing very well. Our wine started to boil. This is gonna reduce in a couple minutes. Our chicken is going, our, our mushrooms are going and our beef is getting ready. And when you're doing the filet, you want to make sure that you sear every part of it. The top, the bottom, and you want to make sure you, you sear the sides. Because when once you get it out of the oven, if you don't sear them, you're going to see that they turn almost, uh, a color that's not very pleasant. You want to have that nice brown crispy finish to them. Our fillets are almost ready. We already set them on the top, bottom, and now we're gonna go to the last side that we need to sear. Once we have them like this, make sure that we have an oven-proof skillet, and we're just gonna put the whole pan into the oven. We're gonna give it about 10 minutes, and it should be ready for service. We're just gonna check the mushrooms now. Mushrooms are doing swell. Mmm, the, the smells, there is, it's incredible. The aromatics, the garlic and the herbs with the seared mushrooms. This is gonna be fantastic with that filet mignon. Welcome back. Uh, to finish the filet mignon, uh, to plate it, we have uh, our rested filet mignon. We did our, our butternut squash. We post it in a, in a food processor with a dash of butter, and this is the consistency that you're looking to have. A rest of filet mignon, some uh, chives for garnish. Now we're gonna finish this. We have the mushrooms with the chicken stock. It's almost ready. They're coating very nicely. We're just gonna finish this with a little bit of arugula. It gives it a little freshness and that peppery that it, it just, it's divine. And we're just looking to wilt this. You don't want to cook the arugula too long because it, it will turn colors on you. Yeah, just like that. Slightly wilted. Our red wine reduction is ready. We're going to strain it. And out of, a, out of a half a bottle, you'll get like a half a cup out of finished product. And this is the consistency we're looking for. To plate the dish, we have a, a regular dinner plate. We're just gonna put this in the, in the puree in the middle. And we're just gonna make a little divot in the bottom of the plate, like a little well, of sort. And we're gonna utilize that, that well to put our mushrooms in it. So anything that you will put in that little well, it's not gonna stain your plate. It's gonna look very, very composed. We're gonna do the mushrooms right in the center. See, and the arugula adds that little nice pop of color, a little bit of contrast that, is, that you really wanna have in your dishes for everything to be distinguished inside the dish. At this point, I will do some of the reduction with the mushrooms, a little bit goes a long way. You, just, you don't want to overdo this because it gets, uh, it could be overpowering. And with this, I'm gonna put the filet on top. And we're just gonna garnish with some chives. And there you go. Here's your presentation, the roasted filet mignon with pan seared uh, cremini mushrooms and the butternut squash puree. And we'll be right back with the next dish. It will be the tuna with the jicama slaw.
Welcome back. Now that our, our coconut roast panna cottas have set, and you have them here, we're gonna show you how to plate this two ways. First of all, we're gonna, we're gonna have this version that we have it in the glass. That's already, you can see that's already set. We're gonna go really simple with this. We're just gonna put raspberry in the middle. We're gonna have a couple bl blueberries. Just make sure you put them a little bit around. We're gonna have some gooseberries as well. And a little blackberry. And for this presentation, that will be it. For our second, for our second presentation, we, we have this in this little tins. You run a knife around the, the bottom, and once you flip them, now we have them here. What you're gonna do to make a more elegant presentation, you got a little cookie cutter that fits the mold. And we're actually gonna cut it to make sure that it looks the way that we want it to look. See, it's gonna look so much better. I'm gonna pick it up with a little spatula. Put it in the center of the plate. And we're gonna repeat the same plating with the, with the, next, with the next one. We're gonna do some blueberries. And at this point, you can use whatever you have in hand. If you have a little chocolate sauce, you wanna experiment with a little caramel. Uh, you can get creative with this type of desserts. And at this point, we just wanna make sure that the plate is nice and colorful. Cause the desserts got the texture and all the flavors that we want. Now we just wanna do some, some color and bring a little acidity to the, to the party. And here we go. That will be the roast water coconut panna cotta. Enjoy. Our first course today is gonna be a seared tuna tataki with a celery root and a radish slaw. That's gonna come with a sherry vinegar, orange honey mustard dressing and uh, we have this beautiful ahi tuna. I like to do my own seasoning. It's, uh, it's salt, dashi. Dashi is a, it's a Japanese ingredient. It's a fermented, simmered, uh, smoked, skipjack tuna that they make into like this little pellet so you can find that in, uh, in shaved. Uh, it's a very good accent. They use, it's, it's used a lot in Japanese cuisine. So first of all, we're gonna, we're gonna coat our tuna with a little bit of olive oil. For this, I don't. I, I like to do the oil on the actual tuna, because if you, we're, we're gonna need, we're just gonna be searing the tuna. If you have a hot pan and you put oil in it, you might get flare-ups, and that's never good. If the oil burns, you're gonna get a a lot of residue uh, taste on it. That is, it's just not gonna be good. So now that we have our tuna covered, we're gonna grab our seasonings. We're gonna grab our seasonings. We're gonna make sure we got that seasoning everywhere on this tuna. It's gonna be lovely. Okay, we have the seasoned tuna. I'm just gonna give it a nice seared. See, a lot of smoke. That's what you wanna see, that's what you wanna hear when you're searing tuna. The, the hotter the pan, it will smoke, but you really just wanna give it a nice crust and keep it raw in the inside. And this is not gonna take a lot of time, you see? Right, right away, it's gonna be about 10 seconds on each side. So this will go really quick, you cannot, don't, don't go wandering around. See. Nice and hot pan. Cast iron works well for this. Uh, stainless steel is obviously a good choice. There we go. We almost have the tuna ready. You wanna make sure that you sear it on every single side 
because uh, for presentation wise when we're going to be slicing it you want to see that nice uh, ring around the tuna yeah We're almost ready. This is gonna be the last side that it needs to be seared. And the tuna's gonna be ready. There we go. Our seared tuna, it's ready. Let's keep it there. Take that off the heat. Uh, now we're gonna proceed to do our slaw. Uh, so it's gonna be a very simple slaw. We have our, our celery root. We're gonna do a bit of carrots. Uh, we, use this, we use the Japanese mandolin. It makes your job so much easier. Uh, you get a very consist consistent product when, when you use uh, this, this type of uh, a kitchen utensils. Here, obviously, we're gonna do, we're gonna season it, some salt, pepper. One key ingredient that I love to use is a little bit of cilantro. It's gonna give it a, a little bit of color, a little pop. We're gonna use some of our green onions over here. We have our, our, our dressing already done. I'm just gonna just do it just to coat. You don't wanna do a lot of dressing. You, you never wanna overdress the salads. Not too much, not too little. You just always gotta hit on the right spot. See, now that we got it mixed, it's getting those beautiful colors. We're gonna set it aside for a second. Uh, we actually ready to plate this. We got our plate, our vessel. For this, I like to use a ring mold. You can uh, av uh, avoid the ring mold and just put it by hand. But um, I find that it makes a more attractive presentation once you have the whole dish together. It looks, uh, it looks a little bit more polished. So we're gonna try to put everything inside of the ring mold. Sometimes I like to go outside, it's just to have a base level where everything's gonna go in the plate. There we go. Make sure we pack it a little bit. We do wanna pack it a little bit down. Make sure it's some, somewhat compact in there. So when we take the ring mold, it just it won't run on the plate. See? See? And, and it keeps somewhat of its shape. Now we're gonna proceed to grab some other tuna. And see? See that ring that it goes all the way around? You wanna be consistent on that. Now if you do 10 seconds, try to do 10 seconds all the way around. So you have a very consistent product. So at the end, you don't have to do a lot to make the dish look amazing. It's with the technique that you're using, that's how you're making the final, the final product look amazing. We're gonna do about four slices here. That it will be on the three ounce range. And just put that on top. We're gonna hit it with a little black Hawaiian salt. We have here some pomegranate seeds. And we have some toasted pumpkin seeds. This is uh, all for texture and colors. And you basically don't, don't wanna overdo this as well. Just put some, just for texture and colors. Gonna hit it like that. And here we have it. This is gonna be the seared tuna tataki with the celery root and uh, honey mustard with orange dressing. When we come back, the, our panna cotta is set. We're gonna show you how you're gonna plate it. 